All right, we'll try to get through this one quickly. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but you know, the scientific method, pretty important, gotta say, for, you know, understanding how all everything works in science. So the first step again of the, of the scientific method is we observe something. So let's say we're trying to figure out if somebody likes us or not. Does this person have a crush on us? That's our observation. Um, so then let's let's say that we make a hypothesis. Then hypothesis. Our hypothesis would be that this person is into us. So then our prediction would be something like this. Prediction. Prediction. If this person has a crush on us, then they will text us often when we text them. Seems pretty reasonable. So our experiment would then be what? So an interesting thing about this experiment is it has to be testable. This person is into us. We can test that. And our prediction kind of contains that test. If this person has a crush on us, then they will text us often when we text them. So then the experiment's pretty straightforward, right? Experiment would be, we text them and measure how long it takes for them to respond. And maybe also simultaneously, we text someone we know isn't into us and compare the results. Okay, then we collect that data and we draw a conclusion. And that conclusion is we, we look at the data and describe in words what it is telling us. And try to be as unbiased as possible. But this is where the bias can come in because we're we are drawing a conclusion on it, telling us. So let's say this person, we texted them, and they never texted us back. They probably don't like us, but that actually doesn't mean that they don't like us. But that might be our conclusion. Maybe they just thought we were a spammer or something, or maybe they were in the hospital, they were in an accident. We could also run this experiment, and maybe they text us a lot. And then we draw the conclusion that they do like us. But maybe they don't. Maybe they're just, they want to be our friend. So our conclusion is not always 100% accurate. But the more we run the experiment, we could then run another experiment. We could, whoa, ask them on a date. You know, like just be forthright. That's a good experiment to run. We could buy them a gift and see if it makes them feel strange. We could tell them that we like them. What? see how that see how that experiment goes and the more that we do that and the more data that we collect we can be more confident in that uh, experiment so uh, you can never prove anything with science you can only support or um what is the opposite of support uh unsupport your hypothesis or show that your hypothesis isn't accurate. So you can either, you can only support your hypothesis or show that it's not accurate. Can only be supported or God, I'm, I'm like failing on a word that I want and it's irritating me or shown to be inaccurate. Can not be proven ever you can never prove anything with science however let's say this whole process we do for something else like science more scientific than dating 
and another lab does it, and another lab does it, and another lab does it, and another lab does it. Whoa, what is going on with that that guy there? It's interesting. I'll accept the weirdness. And another lab does it, and another lab does it. Pretty crazy, right? And all of them, every single one of these labs, scientists, I'm not sure what happened there, but that is a little spooky. They all get the same conclusion. Every single one of these, boom. Yep, supports the hypothesis, 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 and they all do it in different ways, and they do it with different research. And all of this can come then funnel down into something, and this happens for years and years and years. Different scientists support the same hypothesis with different experiments over many years. If this happens, a very special thing in science happens. This is all distilled down into something called a theory. A theory in science is not, oh, I got a good idea. This is maybe how it works. A theory is about as close as you can get to proving something with science. But you don't ever prove anything in science. You only support or reject your hypothesis. There it is. <laughs> Just like you get rejected in dating, you support or you reject a hypothesis. But if you support a hypothesis enough, brrr, you distill it down into a theory. And there are several theories uh, in biology. One is that all life comes from cells. It's called the cell theory. Um, another is the theory. God, I cannot spell theory that all life shares a common ancestor. That's the theory of evolution. Um, and there are others as well. Um, there's a theory on homeostasis, uh, which is an organism has to keep balance in its internal environment, different from its external environment. Um, and as well as gene theory, heritable traits, so on and so forth. What happened to my cell theory? Okay, there it is. There's others as well. But those are just some main ones that I want you to really, only the ones I care that you know are the cell theory and the theory of evolution. Um, so that's how the scientific method works. And there's just a couple of interesting little tidbits that I want you to kind of think about. Um, with regard to this, let me remove all these. Actually, I'm just going to delete this one, get you out of the way. Um, and then I'll move all of this. I'll just leave it. Sorry. So we do an experiment and a lot of the times in medicine, When we do an experiment testing a medicine or a drug, we often include a placebo. This is very interesting. So we're gonna test a new medicine that a, a biotech pharma company maybe made, and maybe this cures um, some type of illness uh, maybe it, let's say, shrinks pancreatic tumors or something like that. You take this pill and your pancreatic tumor will be decreased. Um, so the scientists developed this drug. Now we have to test to make sure that it works. Does this actually do anything? So we'll run the experiment. So then we have to run an experiment. And that experiment has to include the drug being tested and it also has to include something called a placebo, which is a sugar pill. 
And what's crazy is that you look at any clinical trial, and let's say, you know, I don't know, let's say maybe 60%, 60% of pancreatic tumors, which is a tumor in your pancreas, we'll talk about what a pancreas is if you don't know, shrink with this drug. A placebo, the placebo group, they're not receiving the drug, they're receiving the uh, sugar pill. Let's so maybe say like 50% of pancreatic tumors shrink. Oh, whoa, my fingers were off. Tumors shrink. Pretty similar, pretty crazy. So something like like 40 to 60% of all drug effects can be mimicked in the placebo group. What the heck does this mean? It means a couple of things to me, and I think this is really important. Number one, People want to, drug companies want to remove the placebo effects test. They want to re remove the need for a placebo, which is absolute insanity because they want to sell you drugs. Number two, what the heck does this mean? Well, I think there's really three things going on here. One, it's the power of belief. If you believe that a doctor is giving you medicine and it will shrink your tumor, then that power of belief is healing to your body. Sounds crazy, but that's what it's saying. It's either saying that or it's saying that sugar cures almost every single illness. And this 40 to 60% of all drugs, drug effectiveness can be mimicked. I did not type drug effectiveness. Mimicked, mimicked, there we go, by the placebo group. So this is saying that there's some like power in the belief, either that or sugar cures almost every illness, which is possible, and maybe we should test that. And the other thing is there's something about the ceremony. And there's a little article um, that I found really interesting I'm very interested in this topic of the placebo effect um, done by the New York Times. Um, what if the placebo effect isn't a trick? Um, what if there's some realness to it? And there's a little link um, here. Uh, if you would like to type that in and check that out. And this talks about this, that the placebo effect, like going into a room, like going into a room and having someone spend time with you and perform the ceremony of healing is in itself healing pretty wild stuff um so it's not just the belief but it's also this act of going into the doctor that is healing to you and having them give you attention and and give you the pill like they did studies where like they would just give the medicine without any doctor um, and the placebo effect and the drug effect were less in some cases like crazy stuff um, the other things that i want to talk about i guess um you know just you know keep an open mind about the world because like this is a pretty crazy thing to me and I didn't think that that's how placebo would work but keep an open mind about how the world works about how the world works and question question everything really I don't really believe in being a skeptic but just question what people are telling you Question everything, but especially the things you think 
you are sure of. Because trust me, I've been really, really, really wrong about things. And that's part of the scientific process, is we're never married to our hypothesis. We only can support it or reject it. So be ready to reject the things that you think you know the most. Um, and through this process of studying biology and understanding the scientific method, I am 40 years old and I don't look it. I'm a cell biologist and like I use this knowledge. Trust me, I eat garbage food and don't take care of my body all the time. But I use this knowledge to take care of myself. And part of that is expressed in my kind of uh, youthful appearance. And this is the power of science, really. Uh, I got a little image here of uh, a monk here, a Japanese monk and a Native American woman. This Japanese monk is 91 years old. 91 years old. And he looks like that. Whereas this Native American woman is 62 years old. Some of this could be genetic, but a lot of this probably has to do with the environment. Uh, this monk spent most of his time indoors, away and out of the sun, protecting himself from sun damage. And this Native American woman spent most of her life outdoors, exposed to the radiation from sunlight, which would damage her DNA, causing thymine dimers, damaging her skin. Um, so, you know, you can use what you learn in this class about human biology to make decisions for yourself about how to take care of yourself. And so it's, it's an empowering class because we're learning about how your digestion works, how your skin works, how your nervous system works, how to breathe properly, how cells function and make energy. Like there is a lot here for you to take into your everyday life. And so feel free to ask me questions, teach me things. I don't know everything. I have a PhD and I know only a little. So I hope you found the first week interesting. I had fun getting into these topics with you guys. Um, and with that, we'll call it a wrap. I, I'm, I think I'm actually gonna change your little discussion post. I'm not sure what I'll make it, but I'll have a little video explaining it um, as well. All right, guys, I'll see you in lab on Thursday, if you have lab Thursday, uh, or sorry, Wednesday. Yeah, I'll see you in lab Wednesday. Is that accurate? Yes, Wednesday. Monday lab, I'll see you next week. Um, all right, guys, check you.